I'm Dietrich Murphy with EBTV for This Week in East Brunswick, and today we're at the Folk Festival. Let's go check it out. I'm both the founder and the director. I started this back in 1975, and every year we feature a different nationality or ethnic group. This year's feature is Turkish culture and traditions. We have three stages of live music. We have uh, about 80 craft vendors. We have about 20 food vendors. We have a very active children's area, and we attract between 10,000 and 15,000 people every year. This festival is sponsored by the Department of American Studies of Rutgers University, and we have a, a student management team, some 14 students, and uh, they take a course. It's called Folk Festival Management. It's not a club, it's a course. They get three credits. We meet every Monday night in the spring semester, and uh, they put it on. They're divided into three groups. There's a performance team, there's a publicity team and there's an administrative team. And so they get uh, real life skills in putting on a major event like this. Um, so this year is my first year and I'm the public relations coordinator. So my job is really to conduct interviews, make sure everything um, based on press releases are doing okay. Just make sure we have interviews, um, just promoting the festival as a whole. And I'm actually a veteran, so this is my second year on staff. Last year I was an alumni coordinator, and I did hospitality, which is where performers get their food. And this year I'm the food vendor coordinator, so I contracted all the food vendors that are on the right side of the festival. So they all dealt with me, and I you know, signed their contracts, and now we have food, so it's a good time. We learn more and more every year, so it just gets better. Like We know more like what to do, what not to do. Um, each year we add different stages or performances, and we do a th different theme every year, so you'll never see the same theme. So this year's Turkish traditions, like in last, last year, was the Bluegrass Showcase, so it's different every year. When I was in graduate school at the University of Pennsylvania, one of my mentors was Professor Don Yoder, and he was the founder of the Kutztown Folk Festival in eastern Pennsylvania, uh, and he uh, required his students to attend that festival. I attended the festival. I was very inspired by it, and I thought, well, if I ever get the chance, I'd like to start a festival myself. When the Folk Festival first got started in 1975, it was much smaller than what you see here today. Uh, we had uh, one main stage. It was the porch of Woodlawn, the Eagleton Institute. Uh, we had a few crafters. We had a handful of food vendors. The craft booths cost $10. The food booths cost $30. Its whole scale has gone up. The price for the food booths are now around $600. Uh, the price for the craft booths are $150. We use that money to pay the singers, the dancers, and the musicians. But as you can see, uh, the scope of the thing has grown uh, tremendously. I've been coming to this festival for decades. And uh, many years ago, what we did was we would uh, sit on bales of hay, and the folk groups would play every hour. And, and round robin, and little by little, um, started to play more and more at the festival. This festival has, as many do, their own unique personalities, and the personality of this folk festival, firstly, is um, a product of the fact that uh, even though the students change, who volunteer and uh, take the, uh, the, the, the course in how to present and put together a folk festival, they may change whatever, but their personality is imbued in the, uh, in the festival. And because it's student run, it's different than um, many of the other festivals. And also, uh, the idea that it is, uh, my home state is Jersey, New Jersey. And this is a New Jersey festival, celebrates all sorts of New Jersey music, New Jersey artisans, New Jersey ethnicities. Um, I have to thank Angus Gillespie for keeping um, the flame going because this is this is what makes this festival different than the others. What are you guys doing here today? Uh, we're showing people about the Turkish culture and exposing them how it is and making them try on clothes and stuff. It's a traditional outfit 
worn in the Ottoman times. Special events, people would wear these. I'm a first generation American, so it's nice to introduce people about my culture and meeting people with different cultures and their backgrounds. Seeing how America is a melting pot, we have, we have different political views, but at the end of the day, we're here. We love each other, you know, all love. It's good because a lot of people don't know where Turkey is on a map, so when, when I say where I'm from, people think, oh, what's Turkey? I don't even know where that is. So it's nice to let people know about where, that we exist and just to expose them about our culture. What am I doing here? Just demonstrating the art of blacksmithing and try to further the education of folks to come up like yourself and ask what I'm doing. This is the first year here. This is uh, very impressive. I'm very, very uh, pleased with the way they welcomed us in. Been nice. I grew up in the blacksmith shop. My grandfather was a, a journeyman blacksmith from Northern Ireland who came uh, to this country in 1915 and he had a blacksmith shop at one of the DuPont companies uh, and my dad, on, that was on my mom's side, on my dad's side, uh, he learned blacksmithing. He was stationed at Fort Riley, Kansas in, in 1941. So he uh, had a lot of horses to shoe and uh, interesting, his instructor was a, a German officer who had defected to get away from Hitler. My favorite part is the people. Uh, getting to see all the people and, the, and uh, it's uh, very pleasing to know people are still interested in doing this kind of stuff. I have always liked the moment where I, I hear, when I hear someone who I've never heard before. When I hear some, some young artist who's for the first time, it's, uh, it's always been my favorite thing to discover somebody I've never heard before. I'd have to say my favorite part is just seeing it all come together. We put so much hard work into it over the year. So uh, just seeing everybody out there and enjoying it, that's probably my favorite part. So if you missed us this year, be sure to check us out next year. Put it on your calendar, the last Saturday in April, 2018. This is Dietrich Murphy with EBTV for This Week in East Brunswick. I hope you have fun here at the Folk Festival and come out next year. See you next week.